The pinnacle of American interest in laser weapons is now turning into reality, with techniques much more sophisticated than the swords of the Star Wars fighters in the famous movies. During World War II, stories rolled over that the Nazis used a directed X-ray weapon to disable piston engines by ionizing combustion chambers. Fast forward two decades, and it would not be until 1960 for the light weapon to reach the realm of feasibility, when the first working laser was reported in 1960 at the Hughes Research Laboratory in California. It was described as a solution looking for a problem, but before long, the laser's distinctive qualities, its ability to generate an intense, very narrow beam of light of a single wavelength, were being harnessed for science, technology, and medicine. The civilian uses of the laser then improved through the ability to focus a kilowatt of power to a small point where this mechanism is used for welding and cutting expanded metal. The first use for the laser to make direct damage was by the laser blinding weapons, and it was first used during the Falklands conflict and the first Gulf War between Iran and Iraq. Although energy levels were relatively low, it could permanently blind soldiers. The use of laser blinding weapons led to the Protocol on Blinding Laser Weapons, which was issued by the United Nations on October 13, 1995. As of the end of April 2018, the protocol had been agreed to by 109 nations. Lower-powered systems intended to temporarily blind or disorient its target called Dazzlers are still in use today by both the military and law enforcement. Dazzler is a non-lethal weapon intended to cause temporary blindness or disorientation and therefore falls outside the protocol on blinding laser weapons. Laser systems that directly use highly focused light as a ranged weapon to damage a target are part of a class of arms known as Directed Energy Weapons, or DW. By 1980, the Mid-Infrared Advanced Chemical Laser, or MIRACL for short, was the first megawatt-class continuous wave chemical laser built in the world. It is a deuterium fluoride chemical laser with energy spectra distributed among about 10 lasing lines between 3.6 and 4.2 microns wavelength. Since it first released in 1980, it has accumulated well over 3,000 seconds of total lasing time. This makes it the most powerful continuous wave laser in the United States at the time. Its original goal was to be able to track and destroy anti-ship cruise missiles, though mixed results from testing did not lead to any functional weapon system. Creating a functional laser-guided weapon system is more difficult than just building a high-powered laser. It also requires the optics needed to focus the beam at the desired distance and detect and track a mechanism to guide the beam accurately and quickly on the path to the target. Finally, a computer system capable of controlling and coordinating weapon systems in real time is needed as well. After decades, the race intensified among the great powers to gain access to the technology to use lasers as effective weapon systems that protect their military components and their allies from all possible threats. Specialists in weapon manufacturing in the US confirm that laser weapons will be a core part of layered air defense employed by Dodd and its coalition allies. That means laser weapons will be in any integrated system protecting serious assets in all territories under the control of the United States. Evan Hunt, Director of Business Development for High Energy Lasers and Counter Unmanned Systems at the Raytheon Technology Corp said, In five years, any large base that needs to defend its assets will have laser weapons, regardless of service. Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin Corp. and others have been testing prototype lasers on Army Striker combat vehicles, Navy ships, airplanes, and fixed facilities for all services for most of this century. Now, they say, many of those prototype demonstrators are ready to become programs of record, getting into the hands of warfighters in the next two or three years. The Army and Navy are moving forward quickly to place high-energy lasers into service as a major part of their air defense capabilities. According to an April 2020 Congressional Research Service report to Congress titled, Navy Lasers, Railgun, and Gun-Launched Guided Projectiles, lasers offer a significant improvement in the Navy's ability to protect its ships against an enemy with a virtually unlimited number of missiles. The projects to develop solid-state laser weapons include many programs, such as Solid-State Laser Technology Maturation, 
which focused on the rapid development and prototyping of laser weapon systems suitable for testing at sea on a naval surface combatant. Advanced Tactical High Energy Asset, or Athena, which is developed by Lockheed Martin as a prototype laser weapon system to defeat close-in, low-value threats such as improvised rockets, unmanned aerial systems, vehicles, and small boats. The High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, or Helios, which was developed by Lockheed Martin to provide the U.S. Navy with game-changing directed energy capability. Through integration of High Energy Laser and Optical Dazzler technology into the ship and combat system, the Helios system's deep magazine, low cost per kill, speed of light delivery, and precision response enable it to address fleet needs now. And its mature, scalable architecture supports increased laser power levels to counter additional threats in the future. The high-energy SSLs, or solid-state lasers on Navy ships, would generally be short-range defensive weapons. They would generally counter targets at ranges of about one mile to perhaps eventually a few miles. In addition to a low marginal cost per shot and deep magazine, potential advantages of shipboard lasers include fast engagement times, an ability to counter radically maneuvering missiles, an ability to conduct precision engagements, and an ability to use lasers for graduated responses, ranging from detecting and monitoring targets to causing disabling damage. The efforts of the United States are still rapidly moving towards the support and development of laser weapons that act as multi-layered protection systems for its aircraft against any threats on the battlefield. Therefore, it plans to provide integration of laser weapons with its various types of warplanes. Lockheed Martin has committed to putting a defensive laser weapon on an aircraft within five years. Its tactical airborne laser weapon system would be used to shoot down incoming tactical missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, or surface-to-air missiles. It also aims to develop the Self-Protect High-Energy Laser Demonstrator, or SHIELD system for the U.S. Air Force. They're developing critical components of an airborne laser pod, including the high-energy laser and other subsystems. Lockheed Martin is firing on all fronts to be ready to produce a tactical airborne laser pod when the Air Force calls. Lockheed says it is focusing its effort on developing a high-powered fiber laser for the U.S. Air Force. This effort was aimed at putting a compact laser on a fighter aircraft by 2021, but was delayed until 2023 due to technical problems. Nevertheless, Lockheed is optimistic about the technology and is working to push forward a great effort. America's allies also are moving forward rapidly with laser technology for defense. In January 2020, for example, Israel's Ministry of Defense, or MOD, announced a major achievement in a high-energy laser effort. According to a MOD release, the effort will produce a system able to precisely focus laser beams on long-range targets, overcoming atmospheric disturbances, and adding new capability to Israel's four-layer air defense system. Europe also is working to field laser weapons sometime in the 2020s. The Tactical Advanced Laser Optical System, or TALOS for short, backed by the European Defense Agency, could lead to fielding laser weapons with European forces by 2027. On the other hand, Russia has not left the U.S. and its allies alone in the race to acquire laser weapons technology. Russia has entered the field of manufacturing laser weapon systems early, but it has always kept its program secret. In 2018, President Vladimir Putin says that new types of laser weapons developed in Russia will significantly enhance the nation's military capability. In response to Putin's invitation to think up a name for the laser complex, a public vote was held which resulted in the system being called PIRISVET. It's a high-energy laser whose specific data and purpose have remained secret. It's believed to be capable of blinding enemy electro-optical devices and blowing up drones. It is predicted that PIRISVET is able to fight not only against unmanned vehicles, but also against low-orbit reconnaissance satellites by destroying their optical electronic equipment. Though these systems are modest compared to the promises of the multi-billion dollar programs of years past, costing less than one dollar per shot, the versatility of these smaller, less expensive laser-directed energy weapons may prove to be the future of technology. All these technological capabilities and promises that a laser weapon provides on the battlefield, which can be described as deadly, can be said to be weapons that can change the balance of power between countries.